Hi, this is Frank Prendergast for Daily Extra. I'm here with Dr. Daryl Tan, an infectious disease doctor at St. Mike's. Thanks for being with us. Absolutely, thanks. There seems to be an uptick in the incidence of syphilis in Canada. Have you noticed mm -hmm. this and to what do you attribute this? Absolutely, positively, we have noticed a significant uh, increase in syphilis infections in Canada and, and actually across the whole industrialized world uh, in recent years. Uh, the number of new infections continues to go up and up every single year. Uh, most of those infections are concentrated, again, in gay, bisexual, and other men who have sex with men. It seems that Winnipeg is getting harder hit than other areas. Is there a reason for that, or I is this the case? Uh, I've also seen reports about a uh, particularly high uh, number of new syphilis infections uh, focused in men who have sex with men in, in Winnipeg over the past year. I've not been able to scrutinize the extent to which the rate is that different from other ongoing epidemics of syphilis among uh, uh, among guys in other parts of Canada and the industrialized world. Uh, certainly I would say that it's in keeping with this ongoing uh, public health issue that we are dealing with. Uh, and the reason for it is, uh, is, is probably multifactorial. I mean, um, there could be some behavioral components to why this is happening. Uh, if people are um, connecting with new partners more easily, more frequently, uh, that could be a contributor and you could imagine how uh, easier access to new sexual partners, be it through online applications, whatever the case may be, could be a contributor to that. Uh, another factor uh, that is both biological and behavioral is that many people may not appreciate that syphilis is actually an infection that can be transmitted uh, not only through unprotected anal sex, but also through oral sex. And, and many folks might uh, correctly think that oral sex is a sexual activity that they could uh, participate in to reduce the risk of acquiring something like HIV, which is very, very, very uncommonly acquired through that route, but it actually is uh, definitely a way through which uh, syphilis can be contracted. Uh, furthermore, another biological factor is that syphilis infection can be what we call asymptomatic. In other words, someone can have infectious syphilis uh, and actually have no uh, symptoms at all. So people could continue to be sexually active, feeling completely healthy, um, while actually having an, an infection that could be transmitted to other people. Um, if I could just break down the terminology a bit, when you say oral sex, do you mean just blowjobs or is this also including kissing or any uh, like rimming or let's lay it out there for what, yeah. for what it is? Well, really what, what has to happen for syphilis to be transmitted is that the, the bacterium, the spirochete that causes syphilis needs to be uh, transmitted physically from one person who's infect, infected with the infection to a new person. And that tends to happen through mucosal surfaces. So a mucosal surface would be something like uh, the lining of the mouth, uh, the lining of the anus, potentially even the lining of the urethra. So technically anything that puts two of these surfaces together could uh, transmit the infection from an infected person to an uninfected person. So certainly that includes oral sex, meaning a blowjob. It could also technically uh, I involve uh, rimming. It would be extremely uncommon for it to be transmitted through, through kissing. Um, but, uh, but any of the, the traditional kind of sexual activities, so oral sex, uh, vaginal sex, anal sex, could, could definitely transmit this infection. And for people to protect themselves, what do they do? So the, the best way to protect oneself against any sexually transmitted infection is, of course, to use a barrier precaution of some sort, such as a condom. Uh, but another important part of protection is actually having frank and open conversations with uh, new sexual partners about, hey, when's the last time you got tested? Um, and uh, being open and honest about one's own sexually uh, transmitted infection history and, and, and testing history is another good way to kind of keep the lines of communication open. Uh, and then finally, uh, getting tested regularly uh, when there has been sexual activity it is important, again, because infections can be present even when people have no symptoms at all. And what is the test? The test for syphilis uh, classically is a blood test. So it does require a, a venipuncture, a needle to go into the vein to right. collect a blood sample. But it's not the Q-tip going up the It is not, <coughs> no. no. <laughs> Thankfully, those days are, are mostly, mostly over. Sometimes we can also uh, detect certain stages of syphilis, early syphilis infections, by doing uh, a collection of, a, of an ulcer. If someone has an open sore that might be attributable to syphilis, then we can also collect that sort of specimen. And what are the dangers of having syphilis? Syphilis is a complicated infection, and in fact, in the medical literature, historically, it's been referred to as the great mimicker in a lot of old medical textbooks because it can cause such a, a host of different symptoms uh, in different people who are infected. They range from uh, just a sore on the genitalia or on a mucosal surface like the mouth to feeling really sick with a fever, a bad rash to involvement in a number of different organs in the body, the, the liver, the bones, the joints, uh, even the eyes, the brain. Uh, a lot of different organs can be infected depending on uh, the manifestations in a given individual. 
the worst ones actually do involve the brain and can even uh, uh, predispose people to having dementia over the long term, can predispose to strokes uh, in people as well. And so it's uh, for those reasons that it's really important to, to try to curb this epidemic uh, using whatever means we can. And treatment, what does, the, what, what does treatment involve? So treatment for in uh, infectious syphilis involves uh, straight up penicillin, which is an injection uh, of, uh, of, of penicillin typically administered through two separate shots, uh, one in each butt cheek and one in each, uh, on each side of the buttocks. Uh, and depending on the stage of syphilis that a person has, that treatment might need to be repeated up to three times. In, s in, in uncommon situations where syphilis has actually spread to the brain and spinal fluid, what we call neurosyphilis, the treatment has to be even more intensive in, in that it involves uh, at least two weeks of uh, intravenous penicillin using uh, an IV line that needs to be uh, you know, inserted in the arm and, and people have to go around with that for two weeks. So get tested and get treated early. Absolutely, getting tested for syphilis and getting treated as, as soon as possible are the number one ways that we can uh, try to contribute to curbing the epidemic of syphilis. Okay, well thank you very much, I appreciate your time. Absolutely, no problem, my pleasure.